Those guys leave in the summer, mm -hmm. right? Virtual comes out June twelfth. Mike gets married June nineteenth. I, I I just know those dates because I my birthday is June twentieth. Mm. Um, Mike and I have our car trip. You know, we're talking about the future. Those guys quit. I see the next time I see Mike is at the SF contest where they're wearing all their stuff, but they had already quit before then. Okay. You know? Um, and he was like, yeah, man, I'm, he's like, dude, we, you know, we got Jeremy Ray, we, Roddy Bertino. Mm. He's like, yeah, we're good. Like we're, we're just going to just come hard. I, I mean, he was hurt. You know, I remember him calling me and he just was like, I don't understand. He's, you know, he's like, I don't, I don't understand why they, they wanted to leave. And I, and I really genuinely believe that from, from him. Like, you know, like if, if, if you were like, you know, I really want to do this thing and, and you had a friend like Mike, you would do that thing mm. because Mike would go, you know what? I know you can do it, Chris. And he'd, he'd suss you out to know if you were made of it. Sure. He didn't push people who were incapable of being pushed or getting to that next plateau, you know? Um, he, what he, he saw what he saw in you and then he would help give you a nudge and give you a direction. And, and yeah, he was super young and he was somewhat manipulative in some of those ways. Um, I don't, I don't think he destroyed people's lives mm -hmm. that he touched. I think all of those people were incredibly successful, not because of Mike, but in part because of being a part of something and having that guy in their corner. Sure. Yeah. And anyone who had Mike in their corner who I've met has gone on to do pretty great things mm. and has a really lovely guardian angel over their shoulder. So I think he was like, okay, like we're going to, I'm, I'm not looking back. Right. Okay. I, I'm upset that this happened, but I'm looking forward. And he always was looking at new skaters. Always. You know, and they put Pat Shinito on the team. They put Jeremy Ray on the team. They put Ronnie Bertino on the team. <laughs> and then everything else is kind of moving forward. Um, I end up, I'm in Northern California at this point. I go to De Anza Junior College. I take a film course because him and I are talking about doing this film thing. And I get my one credit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm able to translate the credit from that. So I get my degree. Okay. I, get, I don't, I don't like get a diploma. I get like a certificate of graduation. Mm -hmm so that I've completed high school and then I start applying to college and I start applying to these film schools and he, and they're filming they're they're filming now, okay right so they're filming and he's like calling me saying fuck dude this kid Jeremy Ray I think he's going to be like the next Pat Duffy like this kid's amazing now by the way I remember Jeremy Ray sponsored me tape mm. from venture oh, in wow. those days yeah or from new deal somewhere around there I actually have Jeremy's in my <laughs> storage. Okay. I, have, I have Jeremy's sponsor me tape amongst many others. Um, and he was just super psyched. And then he's, and then he told me, he's like, and then there's this kid, there's this kid in the East coast. He's fucking incredible. His name is Jim Greco and I'm going to sponsor him. Damn. So he tells me, he tells me about this kid, Jim Greco. I'm like, who's this? I only say that just because fucking who Jim Greco went on to be. And Mike, this is like spring of 94. Mm. He's like going to sponsor Jim Greco and they're filming. They're filming all the time. And, uh, they went up to the slam city to the, you know, the Vancouver contest at this point, Mike really became a man of faith and his wife, very religious, um, really has a strong spirit with her. And, you know, they, their partnership, you know, grew based on what he found in that for him. Mm. And, uh, and so he kind of was looking at Vancouver as an opportunity. Obviously, Vancouver is kind of a historical place for Plan B and that Colin and, you know, Rick are there. And he looked at that trip as uh, uh, to be able to work through some stuff mm. with them, to just to have a conversation with them, to tell sure. them he forgives them, okay. that he's good, that he's totally good. And uh, so he goes up on that trip, tries to talk to them. I'm not certain... I know the story, but I don't remember it in this moment, but I'm not sure. I think he talked to Rick, may not have talked to Mike. And he was like, okay, great. I've like done what I can do. Like I forgive them. I just want them to know that I forgive them. I want them to know that I right. forgive them. And then he's on the plane back with Danny and he's, you know, he tells that thing to Danny. He says, you know, uh, 
I, uh, if, you know, if, if this plane crashed right now, I'd be okay. Right. He's like, I feel like I've kind of said the things that I need to say. Like, I feel we got the company back on track. We got a great team, Mm -hmm. you know, his, his wife at this point was pregnant. So he's like, you know, every, everything's fucking good. Yeah. And you know, they had, they had a great trip. He felt good about it and they're on their way home. And I think, and then, you know, Jeremy stays with them that night and he gets up. And for me, I'm convinced that he was like, because we would call each other after a trip like that. I'm convinced that he was like, you know, going to call me back or something like that on his way to work. And he was making a left-hand turn on Poway Boulevard off of Springbrook Drive. And there was like a 65-year-old woman who had dropped her grandchild off at preschool. And it's kind of a long turning corner where if you weren't paying attention, you just wouldn't see the stoplight. Mm. And she just T-boned him. And he died instantly. Wow. And uh, and his brother-in-law, who was working at Plan B over that summer, was driving and drove past the accident. Oh, and no. he had this white Lexus, you know, or I think it was a was it Lexus or, or, or a Accord. Hmm. Maybe it was like it was a big, a big, a big white car. And he saw Mike's body being taken from that car. And I was at home in Palo Alto, and Pete. Thompson had kind of was doing something with slap or something. Something I just remember Lance Dawes got me the Beastie Boys tape, Ill Communication. Mm. And I, you know, I mean, back in the day, like if you get a tape before it drops. Sure. Like, oh, yeah. So I got it before it came out. I'm putting that, I put, have that tape in, and the phone rings, and it's like Mike's cousin, Joel, who I know, who I know through Mike. And he's like, Hey, Jake, I just wanted to tell you Mike died this morning. I was like, what? Like, what are you dude. like? What are you talking about, dude? Like, this dude's like you talk about personality, magnet. I mean, mm. he's the fucking man. He's the juice, as he would say. And I just I couldn't process that right. I, at all, at all. Right. So I, I'm actually glad I've gone through my story in the way that I've gone through it because because death is such a uh, it, it is a meat cleaver through your consciousness. And everything stops, and you just you you then you're like mortally alive and awake, and then you have to live with that, right? And like where they say, like death is not for the dying; death is for the living, right? And like we're we're all the ones that have to deal with it. He's on his journey, um, and 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 for me, it was you know everything. Time stopped. I was numb. I I didn't know what to do with myself. I my dad was at work, and he came home sat on a bench with me out in front of the house. He didn't, I mean, like you're talking about the guy that was like so alive, like you're fucking champion in your corner. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, he does now he just doesn't exist. And in my head, I was like, he's in the hospital. I'm going to go down and see him and it's, we're going to be okay. Like I, he's not dead, dead. He's like kind of dead, but they're going to like not make him that dead because when you've never dealt with death before, yeah. Yeah. you have this irrational thing because you can't process mm-hmm. that notion of someone not existing. And so um, I just didn't know what to do. I rented a movie from Brock's, Brock's, Blockbuster, uh, I think of Bronx Tale. Okay. Watched like one minute of that movie. And to this day, I've never, li- I've never really listened. I think I listened to the ill communication once in the last, during the pandemic, I listened to it from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. Never could listen to it again. And I've never watched that movie. And the next day I was on a plane for San Diego and and when I got to Mike's house, I you know, every I mean it was as dark and somber as it was. And and I think for me, like that's not to connect it to waiting for lightning and making the movie with Danny, but like that was the moment where I saw something in Danny that I'd never seen before. And I remember we went to the viewing of Mike's body, which I highly regret doing. Mm. And uh and I went and uh and Danny, I walk out of the viewing and I was like, that wasn't my friend. <laughs> like, I was like, that was definitely not my, that was not Mike. He looked very weird mm. and I've never seen anything like that. And I hadn't. Mm-hmm. And I walk outside and Danny's sitting there and that's Danny way, right? The street Danny. This is post virtual <laughs> reality Danny, right? And he had had his, I think he had had his injury and he looked at me and, I, and with the, an emptiness that shook me. And he just said, Jake, what are we going to do? He said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I was like, 
you know, that's that's Danny Wah filmed him doing all these things, and all of a sudden it was all of a sudden you're just looking at the world through you know, you're so much older in those moments, but you just don't have the maturity to deal with to deal with it, right? You kind of catch back up to it. And then, you know, uh, I went I went I went home to to his house and I pulled out his planner and I called everyone in the planner and you know, kind of just shared the news and tried to say it in a way that was respectful to him and that he that he would have been glad that I did. And I remember I called Jim Greco. Mm. And I remember I saw Jim Greco many years later and I was like, do you remember that? And he remembered it. Mm. And it was like, but it was important for me to kind of be a friendly voice and a safe voice to share that with people. Mm -hmm. But I went right into what can I do? You know, you kind of go into autopilot in those moments. Very shortly after that was the funeral. I remember speaking at the funeral and being a pallbearer. I remember we buried him and Brian Lottie was there and Brian had been on some crazy trip to Hawaii and he it was like it was just like felt like a time warp. I think Mike and Rick were at the funeral. They were in the back. They didn't feel comfortable talking to any of us. I was there as well. Okay. Yeah. So you remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was this just it was incredible. Um and uh and then and then we went to kind of the event afterwards and Colin's dad didn't corner me. I'm not saying it in that way, but that's the phrase, right? He kind of cornered me. He's like, so he's like, Jake, you really need to finish this video. We really need to make sure that you're that you that you'll finish this video. It'll it'll be this video will be really important for the company mm -hmm. to to do it. And I was like, I'm going I'm going to college. Like, I Mike wrote my letter of recommendation to college. I'm like ready to go to college in the fall. I'm like, I don't know that I can do this. I was also like cooked from virtual but now my guy's not there and right. i'm like I, can i do this without him i don't know what the fuck i can do hmm. and um you just sort of lose you know i just lost my guy and um i was pretty i was just pretty lost and i was really i wasn't too self-abusive at that point i think i was just depressed and it was just like really hard to wrap your head around and then I think a couple months passed and, and Mary, his wife, really made an incredible effort to kind of retain what he had built and to kind of like, you know, Danny talked a bit about this. Mm -hmm. I won't be too redundant with what he said, but but there was an effort to kind of keep it together and have sure. some continuity, right? Continuity is, mm -hmm. is super important in life. Um, and then I, I guess I kind of got to a point I was like, okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll make the, I'll edit the video. And we worked out a deal and I sort of, it was funny. I was like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be paid. I just want to make royalties. Okay. I was like, so if the video, if I make a great video, that's all. Right. Then I want to be rewarded for that. And Mike would have been stoked that I, <laughs> that I said that, Yeah. you know? Um, and, and they had just kept filming that summer. Jeremy Ray, Jason Dill came up to Palo Alto. I filmed them a little bit. I was working at a restaurant, getting ready to go to film school. I go to film school in Boston, and then it's Christmas time. Uh, spend Christmas uh, with my family in Palo Alto. The day after Christmas, I fly to San Diego, arrive, you know, uh, on Boxing Day, and I, I stay in Mike's uh, condo. Mm. And there's like all these pictures on the wall because they had like a Christmas party, and so it's like him with his hat and like. I remember I went to that was I just turned 21 in June of that summer and I remember I so I went to the store and I bought like a fifth of vodka like a Smirnoff little thing and and I remember I, I just was like okay all right and then I was like okay now I'll just all right start going through the footage okay great okay so all right and then Matt you know all right who's gonna start okay Pachinata starts okay great you know and Jeremy was around a lot Paul 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 Luna I think is Jeremy's friend. Jeremy and, and Pat are very close. And again, you know, Mike, the editing room, it's, it, everyone was allowed to be there. Right. You could be there. And, you know, of course, like you, you what do you think, John? Do you, are you feeling this music? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're feeling good. So there's a lot of like confirming, you know, I, I'm like alone cutting this thing. No one's helping me edit it, but, you know, you're, you're making sure that everyone's feeling comfortable with the decisions. And it just sort of found itself. Mm. I believe the video premiered January 5th. I, that's my recollection. It's like January 5th, 6th, or 7th, we premiered Secondhand Smoke. 
and I started it on December 26th. And I remember wow, like drinking geez. half of the Smirnoff on New Year's Eve alone in Mike's condo. Um, as people would come, they would never, I don't remember them staying the night. They would just come and I was living there alone. Wow. And, uh, and then I just was like, you know, we, of course I, you know, had a great relationship with the guys in high row. So it's like, and Ronnie. So remember like I filmed Ronnie for think in the venture videos, like Ronnie and I go way back. Right, and I, I think know. he's arguably one of the most underrated, Straight underappreciated yeah. skaters Straight from up. that time. Yeah. And talented. One thousand percent. I mean, that dude did what? Switch frontside 360 heel flip down the little three at EMB in 1992. <laughs> like so much, like shit. so much shit, so much, shit. so much shit. Yeah. Nolly double back foot heel flip, right? Oh and yeah, I remember you. Like that. there's some, there's anyway, but it was cool, right? Coming way back, like like oh full circle, like Ron, like I'm editing a Ronnie part in in mm. secondhand smoke and all this stuff, and and then for for me, like the story will dovetail there because it's sort of what I'm most proud of and. And Jeremy's talked about it a little bit, but it was like, you know, when Mike said to me, like Duffy's part wasn't going to be what it was. Like we just didn't have it, th mm. that. So I remember picking the Vince, the Vince Giraldi music, right? He had the Charlie Brown music in his part. And uh, and that felt cool because he wasn't going too heavy and he wasn't going too big. Um, and then with Jeremy's part, it was like, I felt really kind of intimidated. Like, fuck man, like, like Mike said, like he's the next Pat Duffy. It's like, this part has to kind of live up to yeah. the promise. And I remember what I remember is we narrowed it down to two songs and it was white room. And I don't remember the other song. Jeremy has a pretty good memory, so he should remember it. And, and we decided white room. Yeah. And then it was like, you know, we did that thing with questionable where we just fucked people up with the opening. And that was really great. And he had that frontside 180 flip at Carlsbad. And it was like, that's kind of the fucking gnarliest clip. Like, that's the fucking one. I mean, the frontside 360 is fucking insane. Yeah. <laughs> but the frontside, frontside 180 flip is like, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew we had two angles of it. And Mike and I would do this sometimes where we would put something in regular motion and then put a slow-mo version in later. Mm -hmm. from, but it was a different camera, so you'd never repeat it. Okay. But you kind of got the trick. And I remember just watching that and being like, where does this fit in, in this fucking part? And then I was like, why don't I fucking just start with it? Just start with that line. And then that song was so rhythmic. And I, again, had, we'd started doing that dun dun with, yeah, yeah. with Danny Danny's White. part. And it was like, and, and, and Mike and I always tried to kind of push towards synchronizing things, but land the front side, Flip, and the moment you hear that music, you know the part's going to start. Because yeah. right. at that point, you're like, what the fuck's going on? And that's yeah, the yeah. best thing, right? Yeah. That's storytelling. You're like, wait, wait, what, what's going to happen? And then it's like, what? And then you see Colin put his hands on his head, and then it's like, boom. And then it's like, okay, next hammer, boom. Yeah. And then next hammer, boom. And then it was like, boom. And, and then it was like the bridge, and then the drum, boom. And he lands the nollie flip on the, you know, or he land, goes into the Carlsbad line, and it's like in the rhythm. And then I, and then that kind of dictated the rhythm, like right away. It's like okay. And then I looked at the bridge, the bridge in the song, and it was like, oh, same thing, dum. And then grinding sound, dun, grinding sound, dun, grinding sound. And for me, it was like, okay, now I know if you're watching this because I'm feeling it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and it was like, okay, you know, and 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 then. And we know we're going to end with that uh, front side flip. Like when you saw it, you saw, you know, reg I, th I, th I think, is it slow or regular mm -hmm. at the beginning? I know it's slow at the end. Um, but you're going to see it at the end to really wrap it all right. up. Right. You know, and, and then it just felt like for me, looking back on it, and I've reflected on this a lot, it's like I felt like that was my, like I was like, Thank you, Sensei. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> like yeah. this is this is my offering Bro. for you. Sure, you know, and I and I felt like I, I I felt like I carried the torch through that moment for Mike. I felt like I delivered for Mary and for the team. And I literally, we we did all the titles and the slow mo and finished the video. We we premiered it in San Diego. My buddy Addison, old skate skate crew friend 
was at the premiere, drove me to the airport, was on a red eye flight back to Boston that night. And then I don't think they ever really paid me what they were supposed to. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I say that all to yeah. say like, that was the times and that was the yeah. thing. But I was like, my work is done. Right. And I felt like, you know, Danny and I had an insane session at night. We were filming that vert stuff together where he did cab heel flip mm. on the vert ramp. He did that massive backside ollie kick flip. Like that was just him and me and a couple of his friends on the, on the deck, like just going, trying to get clips for him. Crazy. And then f for me, I was done. I was just about to ask. The flight home must have been like, well, that's it. I, that's 100%, the last thing 100%, that yeah. I'm going to do for plan B. No, no. The last thing I'm going to do in skateboarding. Uh, Where is that like button right? Is it right here or right here? Just a little scroll um, coming down the bottom. It's it's Subscribe. over to, yeah, it's on your it's on my left. Right. No, on, my on left. your left. Hey, yeah. hit right that there. button right there. Right there. Right there. Yeah, please. The, the like button's kind of like in the in the right middle there. there. It's like we're kind of like Oh, it's there. like right here? Kind of. Like yeah, right there? The subscribe's like over to the left. <laughs> it's like right over there. <laughs> All right.